Hi everyone, my name is Enrique Cardona and welcome to another episode of my podcast. And today I'm talking about a character that, honestly, I never thought he will have his own TV series. And that character, of course, is Loki. So, out of all the characters that got their own MCU Disney Plus show, Loki was one of the lucky ones. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why did they make a Loki TV show? Well, after all, the character was popular with everyone in the Marvel Cinematic Universe fans. I mean, everybody loved him. Everybody saw his performance in Thor, in the Avengers, even in the Dor uh, Thor The Dark World. They all saw as the good part of that movie. And everybody was speculating if Marvel was going to have the idea for a low-key TV series or a movie. And that's what we got for now. And I know what you're thinking also. Isn't Loki dead? Didn't he die in Infinity War? After all, Thanos killed him in a gruesome way, if I say so. So, why did they bring him back? And how did they bring him back? Well, if you must ask, this is going to involve serious spoilers from the Avengers Endgame movie, as well as Loki Season 1 episode. So, I might suggest you stop the video here and go watch Avengers Endgame, because I'm going to spoil everything into the TV series of Loki. So, you need to stop the video here if you're not going to say or do or watch the movie. So, be careful and discretion is advised for you. During the events of Avengers Endgame, we saw that the Avengers travel back in time in order to retrieve the Infinity Stones from the past. But during the events of that, and in the events of New York, we saw that Loki got a hold of the Infinity Stone of the Space Stone, or in this case, the Tesseract, and managed to escape. But he's quickly found by the TVA, the yeah, Time Variant Authority, which is basically Time Police, which is basically finding variants from other times and grab them and put them in trial as well as probe them or just send them back in time or just reset them. It's basically just a time traveling cop police trying to get Loki who's a god of mischief. Just as they're ready to reset Loki, a man called Mobius who works for the TVA decides to use Loki in order to find another variant, in this case another Loki. But just as the TVA is ready to reset Loki, a man of the agency called Mobius decides to recruit Loki in order to find another variant of his. So Loki must join forces with Mobius and the TVA in order to find this variant of his. But what he doesn't realize is that the threat that he's facing is much bigger than he. And the, the fabric of reality could be in potential danger and possibly creating a multiversal war. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that, but first, let's talk about the characters. Oh, so let's talk about the cast and characters. Now, there isn't a lot of famous characters that is in this show, other than of course Jamie Alexander as Sif, and voiceover by Chris Hemsworth as the frog Thor. Yes, there is a Thor that is a frog, yeah, it's in this uh, show, so... You might uh, take a look at that. Episode 5, if you, I'm not mistaken. But let's talk about one of the voiceover actors that made an appearance, and it was creepy and funny at the same time. And that is, of course, Tara Strong herself as Miss Minute. It's clearly obvious that she's obviously just an exposition hologram that does funny stuff and says funny stuff and explains the exposition about the time and the timekeepers and everything of the TVA. But it's underlined that performance that we see a creepy yet smart character that most people won't see coming. And Terry Strong plays the character of a creepy yet funny hologram that can say things and yet you feel scared. Kudos to Tara Strong, she's really strong on that department and it's no coincidence that she did voiceover acting and other stuff. But I never saw her doing stuff in Marvel, 
Hell, this is not the first time that we saw another voiceover actor in this kind of shows because in one division, Greg Delisle does does voices in the commercials that they present in the one division episodes. Yeah, she's there. Now let's talk about characters that we never thought they would get other people to play the same character, but they get so anyway. And that is of course the Greens of Loki. In this case, Kid Loki, played by Jack Vale, Deovia Opare, I hope I pronounced his name well, as Boasting Loki, and Richard E. Grant as Classic Loki. Yeah, Richard E. Grant plays Loki in this episode with the Classic Loki suit. And let me tell you, he's definitely looking creepy as well as uh, funny in those episodes. He does look like Loki, if, if you think about it. Now, what is there to say about this variance of Loki? Well, they're not in it for long, but you can see that they are just as lost as Loki of Tom Hiddleston is. They want to belong somewhere. They all have different types of timelines and lives that they live. And they all seem to have a very distinct personalities and forms. And it's also good to see that they just want to be free. They want to be also finding purpose or glorious purpose as they put it and that is something funny for me to see and it's also good to see the interactions with one another and also be an excellent precursor for what we are going to see in other future Marvel properties so keep an eye on that next we got other characters that we see in this episode that are new for us such as Hunter B-15 played by Wonmi Mosaku now she's clearly playing the tough guy and the straight man to everything that the TVA does. She's basically the muscle of the TVA doing everything she can to apprehend the suspect and bringing them to justice. So that's something that is refreshing to see. But in this case, Hunter B-15 is always outsmarted by Loki. And it's also good to see that they, even though there is a tough character, they don't usually are smart enough to apprehend mysterious people like in this case Loki is. So it's refreshing to see that even though she's the tough guy and the, uh, not the tough woman in this case and tries to apprehend and bring justice to the TVA, she also realizes that what she's doing maybe is not good or maybe not as pure as she thinks it is. I mean, could be a trap. So it's good to see that B-15 goes from just, be, from just being a henchman to a, an interesting character and something that many people will say, oh, she's getting smarter now. So that's good to see. Other characters that we see in this episode is Gugu and Batha Raw. I hope I pronounced that name well. She's playing, of course, Ravonna Renslayer. Oh yeah. You probably think that name for a second. If you're a Marvel fan, you probably know who she is. But I'm not gonna say who she is, just to not spoil anything for the people. But it's also important to see that she's basically the authority of the TVA. Although not the authority, she's more like the liaison, like the head of the table for a second. She is basically responding on behalf of the timekeepers, the, me the people who basically make sure that the timeline is safe. And Ravonna is trying everything in her power to make sure of that, to bring justice and to apprehend every bearing of the TVA. It's good to see that Ravonna Rainslayer, in spite of just being uh, the judge who tries to open her eyes to everything, she realizes that she can't trust anybody. She doesn't believe in the idea of free will, and she can be mean too. And she's basically a stone cold woman. I mean, she doesn't care what other people do, or if someone in the agency turns, or if someone has second thoughts. If she has a mission, she's willing to go to the extra mile to do so, to accomplish that mission and to apprehend the suspect and to bring them to justice or just to eliminate that threat. Anything that Ravana sees, she just destroys or disappears and she doesn't care why or how, at least at the beginning. 
Because later on, as well as in the end of the season, we see that maybe she's wa she wants to find her the free will. At least her free will. But she's also determined and when she's her mindset is set to something, is going to be straightforward. Like she just scares me every time I see her. And kudos to Google for doing so because she's basically everything that I didn't expect from Ravana. At least from the one that I grew up in the comics as well as TV shows and video games. I'll get to that. Other characters that make an appearance, and in this case is another Loki variant. But this time she's a woman. In this case, more specifically, Sofia de Martino as Sylvie. Or as many people call her, the Lady Loki. Oh yeah, there is a Lady Loki in this show. And Sofia de Martino is basically different from the Loki that we saw. She's not like a mischievous person. She doesn't even do that much tricks. She's pretty much a soldier. In this case, her life was just completely erased by the TVA. And ever since she escaped from the TVA, she has been on a mission to find the timekeepers and eliminate them for good. Like kill all the timekeepers and set her own free will. This is what the theme of the show is going to be about and the consequences of free will. But let's get back to Sophie. Or in this case, Sylvie. Sylvie is more like a straight soldier. She is like this soldier who has seen a lot and do a lot and survived and survived. And she doesn't like the idea of just not having free will. And when she meets Loki, or at least her variant of hers, or is it the variant of him or she variant? Of, it doesn't matter. The point is that when she sees Loki, she realizes that maybe she doesn't know how to process all about her life. She didn't have a father anymore, a mother, brothers, nothing. She just stopped fighting and she just kept fighting and fighting and fighting until she finds her objective, which is the timekeepers. And meeting Loki, even though she doesn't like him at first, she realizes that maybe she must to stretch a little bit and to let other people in her life. At least that's what I got from her character perspective. But in this case, Loki, or in this case, Sylvie, Lady Loki, God, it's so confusing when you say it out loud. She's basically doing everything in her power to get through her mission. And it's also good to see that she has different powers to Loki. In this case, instead of creating mischief and other holograms of her, she's just using mind control, which is also kind of implying that she's the Enchantress, the Marvel the version of the Enchantress, not the DC version. Please don't, don't, don't compare those two. They're completely different, I think. The point is, Sylvie is pretty much enchanting people, or at least controlling their minds, in order to get her goals. And let me tell you, she's a lot smarter than Loki, if I say so myself, because my god, her plans and her determination are just, wow. They're just, she scares me more than Ravana, I'll tell you that. And Sofia de Martino, welcome to the MCU. I mean, you scary as hell, please don't kill me. We get a surprise appearance by Owen Wilson as Mobius. Now, Owen Wilson is always being defined as a funny comedian. Like, he's always been defined by his movies of being funny and say wow and so, and doing these expressions and all that. But I never expect him to be in a Marvel movie because, well, what, what he can do? I mean, what kind of character who he could play with. And in this case, he's playing Mobius, which is another agent of the TVA willing to go to the extra mile and be more imaginative and see good in people, even in Loki, in order to get that goal. And let me tell you, Owen Wilson probably be my favorite character in the MCU because he's actually more happy, more excited, more, excited, more creative. He's willing to risk his own career to help Loki in order to find the truth, as well as finding other variants, as well as 
just helping him around. He wants to help Loki and see the good in him. And he likes jet skis. And let me tell you, after this show, I want to ride a jet ski. Just carefully. But let me tell you this. I think Owen Wilson earned his part in the Loki TV show as well as in the MCU lineup. So I'm happy for him. And it's good to see that he's also playing a smart character. And that he's actually seeing things from a different point of view. So that's what I'm welcoming change. But now let's get to the start of this show. And the one that is named after this series. And that is, of course, Tom Hiddleston and Loki. Now, this is a different Loki that we saw before. You see, the Loki that we have been following throughout the entire movies, he has gone from being the brother, to a villain, to a mischievous person, to a redeemed character. And, well, basically being dead. And that's something that Loki finds out in this show. Because after he's found by the TVA, and realizes that his life is setting off a path of death and realizing that he's going to die and let other people die like his mother and his father he realizes maybe he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know what his glorious purpose is and working for the TVA even though he doesn't like it at first and tries to find his own endgame he still changes because he realizes Maybe conquer world and making people suffer is what he's up to, or that's not his goal. He wants to be free, just like Sylvie, just like uh, Mobius, just like everybody else. The theme of this show is obviously free will, but what the show is also saying is the consequences of free will. You can acquire free will, but there's also consequences to it because you make choices that you might regret. And Loki in this entire show is trying to find ways to in, uh, find alternatives to save Sylvie, save Mobius, uh, defeat the TVA, find out who is behind the TVA, and other stuff. But he realizes more and more that maybe there's more to that. Or maybe he doesn't want just to destroy people. And he will realize very hard that having people and having free will will have consequences. And that sometimes choosing by its own selfish goals is not always good. And he will realize that big time in this show. And Tom Hiddleston, let me tell you, he really, really steals the show in this one. Because he, you really see his motivations. He's personality changing. He goes from being, oh, I'm Loki, I'm from Asgard, and I have a glorious purpose, to, oh my god, I'm Loki, and I don't know what to do. And, and to another character, that I'm Loki, I must be determined to stop this evil. It's, also, it's so good to see the changes of his personality, as well as his ideas and motivations. And that is something that he will explore in other uh, seasons of Loki because we will get we will get another season too, but I'll get to that in a minute. So let's talk about the production design and effects. The production design in this episode is astounding. It's interesting to see that the TVA is not only a futuristic as well as uh, out of worldly agency, but it's also retrieving into the old ways, like 70s uh, style. Because we see that they combine 70s and 60s and 50s style of, uh, of layouts and well, as well as rooms and objects to futuristic uh, oppor uh, objects and, and opportunities and other variations of, of, uh, of the science. It's interesting to see that the agency that is protecting everything has different layouts. It's pretty fitting for a time agency. The effects are obviously CG, everything that you see is CG nowadays, but it's also good CG. The Miss Minute uh, CG is very compelling. It almost feels like a 2D uh, character involving 3D animation. 
You also see layouts of the wastelands, the other future timelines, the past timelines. You see other variations of Loki with different costumes, which I definitely appreciate it. Like I said, Richard E. Grant's classic Loki. Having the suit and all is so good and so fascinating. It's also good to see other planets as well as other timelines in other planets. It's so confusing as hell, but definitely worth the payout. And everything that you see from the layout is very different. It's very similar to the previous MCU installments, but different enough to be something. So that I appreciate it. Now let's talk about the episodes. I'm gonna be quickly and go a, a quick round uh, all around them, but we need to see every episode and see what the plot line is going to go, as well as the spoilers of the ending, okay? Episode one, the simple one of Loki leaving the Avengers uh, Tower with the Tesseract, and the TVA finds him, arrests him, ready to reset him, but then Mobius interferes and gives him a little run up of the things he has done after the attack on New York, which is where this Loki is from. So, after discovering about his fate as well as the fate of his mother, which Loki loved very much, as well as finding the fate of Odin, his father, and the things he has done with Thor, with Thor Ragnarok and everything, and the death of his, he realizes there's no escape. Then he realizes of the power of the time, and he realizes maybe he can use that. But then he doesn't know what to do, he cannot escape, so he decides to work with Mobius with the t and the TVA. And then we find out that there is another Loki. Second episode, we find out that this Loki is attacking all members of the TVA. And it's up to Loki and Mobius to work together in order to find out what's going on and why this particular Loki is doing this. And we discover not only that ap Apocalyptic Futures is where this Loki is hiding, but that is a Lady Loki, Sylvie. This is where Sylvie is introduced and she sends a lot of reset uh, chemicals or something uh, across time in order to destroy the TVA and she escapes and Loki follows. And this is where we're going. Episode 3. We find out that this lady Loki is called Sylvie, that she failed at the mission because Loki got her stranded with him in another planet as well as in the apocalypse of that planet. And they both start to bond and interact with each other as well as getting in each other's nerves and as well as find out which takes the other. It's an uh, interesting concept. Oh, and we find out that Loki is, I think, bisexual. So that kind of plays into the whole Loki is different version. So that's interesting to see. Episode four, we find out that Loki and Sylvie together can create a lot of power. And that creates a, a branch in the timeline. The TVA finds them, punishes them both, and then we find out that Mobius is having second thoughts. He's having a mindset of maybe Loki is not a bad guy. He believes in him and get, he gets pruned by Ravonna. Wow, that was shocking, even for me. And then we find out of the timekeepers that they were just fake. They were all three fake. And it's a shocking and then Loki gets pruned. And just as we thought he was dead again, He's in another place with three variant Lokis, the ones that I mentioned early before. Episode 5, we see Loki with the other Lokis going in this place that is the end of time and chased by a cloud that is basically like a dog erasing everything from time. And we see that Mobius is still alive and Sylvie is in that dimension as well, or in that world as well. And they all work together in order to find out what's going on and who's behind the TVA. And it's not the timekeepers. And it's all to, all to each other's collaboration and work in order to find out. And episode six, 
This is where everything hits the fan. As we find out, not only that there was another person behind the TVA in the entire timeline, but also that he remains. Oh yeah. Jonathan Mayers appears in this movie. And as everybody believes and knows by now, he's also going to be in the Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania movie. And you know who he is. King the Conqueror. But in this show, they call him He Who Remains. And this is a different version of Kang that we saw before. Now everybody has talked about Kang the Conqueror across every video, so I'm gonna give my short run. He's a person from the 31 century in which he creates this technology to travel back in time. He conquers worlds as well as places, nicknamed the Conqueror. But then he finds out about other people, other versions of himself across time. And that started a multiversal war. Let me explain the multiversal war for those who don't know. Now, the multiverse is a different concept that many sci-fi uh, shows and movies have reference to. But let me give you the one that Marvel introduced. You see, there is a timeline that is follow like a straight line. Now, everybody and scientists and theorists always theorize that timeline is that time is nonlinear. We just perceive it that way. That is cyclical, and sometimes it's a loop. Or as the Prince of Persia puts it, it's a sandstorm in the desert and there's no stopping it. And in this case, the timeline has always been linear or circular as well. Always going in one straight line. However, the variants that we see of the Lokis as well as other people, they're different versions, meaning that they could change. You see, when the timeline changes, there is another variant, in this case, Loki, or any other person. When that branch is broken, you see that everything changes from the person's personality, gender, as well as uh, motivations, and that creates an alternate universe. You see, the timelines that can change could create an alternate universe. That's the theory of the time travel as well as the multiverse. You change something in the past and that past erases it or at least changes the, the, the trajectory of the time. It becomes something else. It's a theory that I actually enjoy in this because it explains why there are other versions of Loki as well as other uh, other motivations and factors and other things that you might find. And that it also explain why there is no other people in the timeline. Now, the multiverse is a concept that Strange also doesn't know about, or at least it was introduced in the Doctor Strange movie, but it was never explored or explained what it is until now. And then He Who Remains, which is Ken, explains that he has maintained the timeline for a long time. And he has seen everything, knows everything, except what happens when he retires. And when everything changes, because this is something that we're going to see probably in, in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, it's going to ignite a war that nobody will be safe. And this is where everything of the choice of free will comes in. Because Loki and Sylvie have a choice. They could run the TVA and let Kang live, or they could kill Kang and everything will be set loose. Other versions of him, other versions of Kang, going in multiple directions, plotting, destroying, conquering. And this is where Loki realizes that he cannot be the same Loki as before. He has to be better. But Sylvie, she can't let go. She tries to kill Kang, 
Loki tries to stop her, but she sends him to the TVA, and she kills Kang, and the entire multiverse is unleashed. Every version of everybody will be running around, and this is going to be playing in future movies. Hell, it could be uh, playing in a Spider-Man movie. Wink, wink. Now, with Loki the TVA, he has a job now to stop Kang as well as his other versions. But what he doesn't realize is that Sylvie didn't send him to the right TVA. The timelines have changed, so everything is mixed, and he ends up in a different TVA where probably Kang rules. It's the planet of the eighth ending that many people will probably blow their minds. And this is where the season ends. We have to see what happens in season two and what consequences will affect this multiversal war. So what is my final thoughts on Loki? Well, it's a different show from the other ones from WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Even though WandaVision is more about parodying the sitcoms of the past as well as being their own thing and talk about psychological stuff as well as the sentiments of letting go and Falcon and the Winter Soldier is about living up to the legacy that Captain America lived as well as finding peace in other countries as well. Loki is all about free will. It's all about choosing what destiny you have to do and realizing of the consequences they could have. And the choices that you make will always have consequences, good or bad. You have to make the choice and follow through it. And this is where the show shines through because everybody from Mobius, from Sylvie, to even the other Lokis and variants and Ravonna and even Loki, they had to realize what free will stands for and what does it mean and what choices they have to live by. And in my opinion, this is one of my favorite shows. And this is something that we're going to see Brian Charlie in other shows as well as in other versions. So look up to that. I'm going to review other stuff like that, like What If and Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. So keep an eye on those reviews. I'll get to those as soon as possible. So don't worry about that. Well, that's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed my review. Give a like, subscribe to my channel, and please pass around this video. The more views I get, the more beneficial it will be. So I've been Enrique, and I'll see you guys next time.